in the last video we looked at titration curves and indicators and why certain indicators work for certain titrations and why some don't work with certain titrations and so on. What we're going to look at in this video are buffers. Buffer solutions by definition are solutions that will resist change in pH when you add small amounts of an acid or an alkali. Now they're not designed to deal with bucket loads. These are, if you like, um, dealing with accidental additions of acid or alkali. Living systems are buffered. We, we have uh, our blood buffered at around about pH 7.4, I think it is. And that pH has to be maintained if we are to be kind of healthy and alive even. A pH change of just a half a unit is potentially fatal. So it's very important the blood in our body is buffered against any change in pH. If you were to eat, for example, a lemon, then it might taste sour and it might give you a bit of indigestion, but it's not going to hurt you more than that. Whereas the pH, if I put lemon juice in water, the pH would drop drastically, but the buffer in action of blood would stop that happening. So how do buffers work? Well, buffers are usually the combination of a weak acid. Again, we're going to use our old friend, ethanoic. Together with the salt of that weak acid. And the most common salt is the sodium salt. You will notice that the arrow points one way only, and that's because, oops, I'm so sorry, that would be a minus, and that would be Na plus. Um, ionic salts like this will always ionize completely, dissociate completely when you put them in water, so this arrow points one way only. This, on the other hand, as we know, is very much on the left-hand side, it's a weak acid, and hardly any of it dissociates. Now these two together makes a buffer. How does that work? Well, we know obviously that this is providing a huge number of those ions. We also know that there's an awful lot of those molecules present in the weak acid. However, that gets even bigger when this comes into the solution. Because by Le Chatelier, when you introduce these ions, the equilibrium here will shift to the left, producing more of the molecules. So in a buffer, you will have an acidic reserve designed to cope with any base that comes in, and a basic reserve designed to cope with any acid that comes in. Now the H plus concentration there will give you the pH of the buffer. What we are trying to do is keep that there pretty much the same value. It may change slightly, but it will only be very, very slight. So let's see what would happen. So let's say, for example, we add an acid. So we add H plus ions to our buffer. Then which of the reserves do you think is likely to come into play? Pause the video if you want to think about it. Well, clearly this is going to mop up the H+, and this then would turn into the molecules of acid there. That would stop the H+, concentration changing by any amount, and maintain the pH. Alternatively, what if we add a base, which effectively means adding hydroxide ions? Well, the hydroxide ions, you can look at it from two points of view. They can either react with the H pluses there and turn them into water, and removing those from the equilibrium would then cause this molecule to dissociate to return those H plus ions. Again, the H plus concentration hardly changes. Alternatively, you can react those directly with the CH3, COOH, CH3, COOH, and this will produce CH3, COO minus, and H2O, which is exactly the same thing. We are turning that molecule into that ion, and we're turning the H plus into H2O. So whichever way you look at it, we are again resisting pH change when any solution, acid or alkali, is added.
Okay? Again, that would be accidental. If somebody was to drink a bottle of concentrated sulfuric acid, they're not going to survive. It's when you accidentally, or if you eat any food which is rich in acid, for example, then your blood would not change the pH and you'd still be okay afterwards.